Hey guys, it's Bex here, and I am here with my very good friend, Quentin Venny. We've been hanging out all day. We just did a Periscope together, and I'm really excited to be having this conversation with him because um, it's a hot button topic. Yeah. Welcome, Quentin. Thank you. <laughs> You've been Again. here all day. It feels <laughs> weird to say welcome. <laughs> We were on Periscope doing the live thing together and mm -hmm. someone, um, knowing that we talk about anxiety and we're both people who manage our anxiety every mm -hmm. single day of our lives, yeah. it's always coming at us but we're always kind of like reacting in appropriate ways trying to. Um, they wanted to know that if medication is ever the answer and if them taking medication is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. It's like I a big elephant important. in the room. Yeah. Well, I personally believe that, um, but just based off my personal experience, for those of you who may not know, I actually endured a two-year addiction to anxiety medication, um, and it was an addiction that ultimately uh, led to an overdose, an accidental overdose, and it almost killed me on multiple occasions. So um, I'm a little biased when it comes to uh, medication yeah. because I don't feel like um, it's I don't feel like medication should be the first rule of defense in combating a mental health disorder. Okay. I think I there mean, are other fair. alternatives. I don't think that's biased. I think that that's um, knowledge and experience that you gained from having gone through it. Yeah. Same as me. I mean, I was on different medications starting from the time I was eight years old when I was mm. uh, first given lithium, which is great. Now that I think about it, it's like eight years old. But, you know, the resources weren't really there. They really didn't know how to treat children with um, mental health issues. Mm. So it was lithium and then myriad other medications over the years. And what it did for me was just dull my senses mm. and make me feel like I wasn't myself. Yeah. So I wasn't able to be creative. I wasn't able to relate in relationships um, the way that I wanted to. So I'm biased in a way that, that I know that it doesn't work for me. Yeah. But I think that I'm open enough to know that medication does work for some people in many different circumstances. Yeah. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about tools and resources and what we do to manage our stuff from day to day. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree totally. I'm not completely closed-minded to the idea of, uh, of people taking medication. I mean, I, I work with people uh, on a regular basis who, you know, who use medication and that's their, that's their thing. Yeah. But uh, out of everyone that I deal with, about 90% of people don't like the way that medication makes them feel. Right. They don't feel like it's as, a, as effective as their doctors initially said that it would be. Right. Um, and that was the problem that I had with it. So I feel like, um, you know, even if you are on medication right now, I'm not demonizing you or telling you to, to not take the medication, mm -hmm. but look into other alternatives like what Bex and I uh, uh, in, indulge ourselves in, mindful uh, meditation, uh, nutrition and dietary changes, right. um, our yoga practice, um, even someone mentioned something today about uh, going to a therapist. You know, um, there are also uh, other means to dealing with and combating the anxiety before it starts. Well, this is, this is an, important part, uh, an important point that came up during the Periscope today was that, um, Anxiety is a symptom, right? Yeah. It's not the problem. It's a symptom of something that's going on deep down inside of us. Maybe it's, it's covered so deep that we wouldn't even recognize it if it showed itself to us. So what I've done, my practice, is to, act, is to access a lot of different tools, a lot of different modalities, whether it's meditation or diet and exercise or seeing a psychotherapist or a hypnotherapist or getting energy work. I had a massage yesterday and had some great energy work. All of these things are just ways for me to connect myself better to, to myself. To yourself, yeah. To find that thing, to uncover those layers of doubt, insecurity, shame, guilt, frustration, anxiety, depression. Uncover those layers to reveal like this inner God self yeah. that's connected to source, that has all the answers, all the truth. So I use these tools. I don't sit by myself in a bubble and meditate all day and expect my, my problems to go away. It does work for a lot of people. I do go outside of myself for advice, wisdom, teachers, gurus, methods, books, whatever, and I don't use them every day. I don't use them all the time. Yeah. I just have them there. I allow myself to be open and access. I think that we have what we need inside to heal ourselves, but we need the tools to be able to kind of like unlock them. the door. Like yeah. that's the, that's you're, you're going to find a different key than me, yeah. but it's going to lead you to yourself. 
medication, medication just like any other drugs, alcohol, whatever, it kind of creates a barrier. It, it blocks. Yeah, it, it, blocks. It, it, it blocks it. You know, uh, I, I believe the same thing. I think that anxiety is a, a, a form of communication. I think mm -hmm. anxiety is a way for your body to, to communicate or convey some type of message to you. It's up to us to be open enough to receive what that message is. I love that. I love anxiety as a means of communication. My girlfriend, Alex Jameson, she talks about cravings yeah. and women and their cravings. And she says, cravings are a way of our body communicating with us. And I love that anxiety, just like any kind of feeling that comes up, yeah. good or bad. Any sensation. Like, yeah. Right, it needs to be recognized and acknowledged yeah. and, um, and figured out. Like, don't be afraid to be curious. First of all, we're not doctors. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doctors. And I do believe that medication helps a lot of people, especially in acute emergency situations. Um, so that being said though, if you're talking to your doctor and your doctor is recommending uh, medication to you, be sure at least that that doctor is also open to other means of healing. Agreed. So talk to your doctor about, you know, what about meditation? Yeah. What about yoga? What about if I change my diet? If your doctor's like, that's BS. Don't don't even try it. Like that natural stuff is is hooey. You it might be time to get another doctor. But if your doctor's like, look, I still think medication's right for you in this circumstance. But definitely try those other things. Those could work for you, or maybe try those things worse or first, and then we'll have another conversation. That's that's a keeper. That's yeah, a good doctor. I agree. I completely agree. And that and that was something that know. I didn't have. I'm so smart. No, yeah. <laughs> like is gonna like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I didn't have that option. You know, I was immediately told that I would be on medication. Mm -hmm. Even initially when I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression at 14, you know, the doctors wanted to give me Prozac. And it was like, well, isn't that a behavioral modification type of drug? Like, I don't have behavioral issues. You know, I have some deep rooted shit going on inside of my life, okay. you know, that nobody really addressed. And I was too young at the time to really identify with and, and completely understand and process. Um, so I, I agree totally. I mean, if, if you do have a doctor that's open to those types of things, you know, it can help. You know, medication should not be the only tool. Uh, it could be used as something, as you mentioned, something that's acute, something that's real quick and instantaneous when you don't have time or you're not sure 100 percent of the way, you know, to kind of come back to self. Right. You know, that's a process. I did. not None of us kind of jumped into meditation and said we're experts at meditating. You know, it's all been a process. It's all something that we can learn learn uh, periodically um, through practice. I think the big takeaway is, is that we do have the means to heal ourselves, mm -hmm. but part of those means are asking for help, seeking greater knowledge that's outside of yourself, seeking greater wisdom, using the tools that we've been given. You know, we're here in this, this world to, to experience other things, not to live on an island by ourselves. Yeah. So And to believe. Believe in the possibilities. Believe in your ability to make that happen. Believe yeah. in miracles. Believe in manifestation. And don't just go with the first rule of defense by some person who doesn't know you specifically, right. just knows the textbook definition of what these things look like. Because it could be wrong. So it's belief slash faith. Yes. Action. Action. Very important. Repetitive action, consistency. consistency. Keep going back. You don't heal, heal yourself in a day. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep working on it. Keep walking the path, step by step, every single day. Maybe it uh, changes up along the way, and that's cool too. Just keep seeking, keep growing, keep learning, and um, continue healing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Quentin's awesome. You can find him at quentinvenny.com. He talks about all kinds of things anxiety included but also green juice and yoga and just general good stuff that's going to make you live life better and who doesn't want that and uh, i hope that he comes back lots and lots i think we're going to oh, shoot another little course. video just for my newsletter peeps right yeah, now absolutely all right yeah. see you soon welcome to another what's your mantra with quentin <laughs> benny from quentinbenny.com this is just for you guys my newsletter peeps who I love so much. Thank you so much for signing up for the Bliss Notes newsletter. I'm giving you guys my favorite people and their mantras. And I'm gonna put you on the spot. And you have yeah. like two